to start always with the Brazilian games because I'm Brazilian so <laughs> it's easier for me I want to, to cheer for those guys so oh, okay I fuck it up let's try this again I'm not so good at this what's the fucking bottom? this one okay uh, Miguel started banning the Burmese it seems that the Burmese is kind, are kind of a uh, OP civilization no one wants to deal with those and he picked the Indians. I like this because I really think that the Imperial Camas are a power to be recognized and can change many situations. Spain then go for Berbers and Mayans, so one of the best Camilla receives and the Mayans that are flexible. I like those. Slabs, okay, and Malians. That's nice. Franks and Aztecs, Magyars and Huns. Okay, so Brazil with Horse civilization, horse civilizations, labs, horse and infantry civilization, Indians, camelry, camelry of the Berbers, Mayans, Franks, Aztecs. It seems that civilizations that have strong camels are being really, really more like it nowadays after the camels are not that weak against buildings. So I, I enjoy this. And Spanish, Aztecs and Spanish. Spanish? I don't know why. I don't feel Spanish so strong in this meta, but let's see. So this is the top 10 civilization that those guys have chosen uh, with the Burmese banned and I believe that it was banned because of th because they are good. And as we are getting used to Portuguese and gods on the last position, so sorry guys. Okay, closing this draft, we can go there for the games, I just download them. So let me start. Pretty to would call you race for saying the hat. What? <laughs> let me go with this uh, watch record game one. You know, I'm liking this tournament, but it would be much more fun if I could cast. And Arabia, and Iceland, uh, Riverside Fortress, Arena Games, all uh, this map variety. And we, I could see teams like Finland and Nabs playing B Black Forest and things like this. I would enjoy much more. But anyway, better uh, an Arabia tournament than an Iceland one. Eh? <laughs> okay, so starting here, the first game, the first map here is Not Socotra. That's a great name, huh? Eh? I like it. Let me close these Chrome tabs here. That can make it slow. Let me put the overlay. And starting here with the map Not Socotra. The chosen civilizations are Root here playing with the Burme with the Italians. That's nice. Let me just check one thing. Uh, yeah. The, their advancing next aid costs uh, less 15% and this is important in, in this so what's important here for the Italians is that advancing the shipper advance can be used in this map as a tool because you start with only 20 stone only enough to repair something or to put two tiles you cannot even make a gate with this stone so any civilization that wants to use their castle age unit is not gonna have a good time but any civilization that tries to go for a rush but wants the, uh, to later advance faster to ages like the byzantines or italians are a good pick here so you could play want to see arbalests or things like this this is what i can see happening here Another important thing about this map is that the woods surround the map. There's a lot of gold there. Uh, uh, that's a, there's a good amount of gold close to the sea. But there's no berries, so people will often lure, use the zebras, use the ostriches as their main food source, of course, with the elephants. And of course, no ship. So scouting is a bit harder here. Not that. that, that it's much of a problem since you can just, I don't know, scout a small area and together with your teammates you could have a bigger area scouted. In my opinion, even Portuguese could be adventurous in, uh, 
could be advantageous here because of their free cartography. You could use this to do some push or something. Anyway, going for the civilizations. Root playing with the Italians, I can see a lot of reasoning behind that. Miguel here with the Chinese, I don't know how I feel. I honestly feel that like the Chinese could be a better option in two other maps. Step, because it's a no TC map, you have to build your TC and Chinese would be ahead. And that other one, I believe it's Beach Fight, where you start with farms. And farming being important for your team really yes. changes something more in those maps. And here, last, we have the gown with the Malay. I also like the Malay in this map because, as I said before, you can use the Malay with their faster up to increase the effectiveness of uh, any strategy that goes only 1 TC. So, guys, I do not expect people going uh, to boom here only if they buy a lot of stone and this would be not so good for economy it seems that it's six minutes and brazil team is already making a team wall here i can see miguel walling at front root here completing the wall they have totally covered this area and the gun is finishing here so brazil team has totally covered where what's the area that they need to wall it's really nice they totally knows what they are doing uh, but let's check also the Neb civilizations. Slan has the Saracens. Oh, I like the Saracens. I think that the Saracens could be used here in a lot of different ways. You could use their ship market to, for example, do an, even a tower push by get, getting gold, buying stone with the ship market and cheaper trading fees and using this because tower push could be strong in a map where people have no way of countering it with their own towers unless they spend a lot of resources so the Saracens could shine in this kind of map I like this idea the other civilization that I see here is the Byzantines and I really really appreciate this choice as well the Byzantine have a cheaper imperial age advancing so for example if Spaden goes for uh, archers then crossbows and then arbalests he could also do a similar strategy that Italian Root and Malay Dogon could do that's going fast imp Imperial and this could be really really nice for him not to mention that both Saracens and Byzantines have the Bombard Cannons and Cannoneers and things like this oh that's that's uh, a good reminder for, from Malamadre the Saracen bonus also is helpful for archers to take down walls so well guys I think we have a lot of reasons to believe on those civilizations and last here we have mentalists playing as the Teutons I don't know about the Teutons anyway uh, you cannot just get the best civilizations here it's not possible oh I got, I got some weird noise okay Otsuka is now part of the wolf pack he just subscribed you should Otsuka you should man <laughs> So that's it, let's see how things are going. Root is going up here, of course, that with the Chinese farms of Brazilian team, they can have a much better economy if they depend on farming. So Root's going up here with 22 villagers, Miguel is going up also with 23 villagers, and Dogon seems to be going up as well with 23, and he will be a lot faster, you can see here. On the on the screen how faster he's going to be he's gonna catch up with the other guys because of the Malay uptime but Islam is going up real quickly here with six villagers on gold the only reasoning behind this might be the tower push that I was told you telling you guys because if he just plays a market he can buy stone here and starts pushing so I do not think he's going for archers because he's not making barracks. He has an excess, excessive number here of villagers. Oh, but he forgot the mule. You see, you needed the mule to make the market. Now he did the market, and with 10 minutes and 30 seconds, he will start to buy stone. Let's go to his view just so we can check this. Okay, he just bought 300 stone with the with his gold. The price market for for buying stone is now one. 143 stone so for others to buy would be even worse they would have to spend like 
uh, one, 175 wood in order to make a market more uh, 104 to buy the first uh, stone the first hundred stone that wouldn't <laughs> let them build even one tower so they would have to spend more so anyone who wanted to make a tower would have to spend a lot Miguel just sacrificed his stone here in order to stop his advance but let's see how this goes so Slans pushing Spaden the Byzantine guy is making a few men at arms in order to help breaking the walls and Mentalist is making a stable here I do not like this lineup to be honest because I would uh, rather see a tower push being supported by archers and scouts because we have Brazilian team Root going for archers we have Brazilian team Dogão going for archers and we have Miguel I don't know what he's doing okay he's going for scouts of course I'm just seeing his table so at some point if Brazil holds down they will have two guys with archers, one guy with scouts against mentalist and three men at arms from Spaden. So that's what I don't like. It's just now Spaden is put up an archery range and Brazilian guys have four already. So this won't be good. Anyway, Navis is getting a lot of map control here. Slan is also walling the left side of his base. So even if Bru tries to push, it will be not as easy. You see, in the last moment, it's land completing the walls. <laughs> and of course, since he's Saracens, he could even buy more stone to, make, to complete his walls. Dogon now with a good number of archers, Miguel with some houses walling. So the scouts here from Mentalist and the rest of the army is not doing a great advance here. Slan's having to sell other resources in order to keep the tower push. The stone prices now are past 150 so this is not good for him and of course you can see here Spaden now switching into archers Root is trying to rush Slan here oh my god Slan Slan is about to Ooh, Slan almost got dead here <laughs> he could have been killed it was not a joke what do you think that what do you think of this shit map in important tournament? I like this shitty map. I think that this map uh, is really different from what we are used to play. Uh, the meta from this map is unknown yet. So you have people using Saracen in a competitive way, which is great. You you, you put you just made a map with no stone, so you force guys to to go one to see strategies so civilizations like the Chinese are going to make the farms better civilization like the Italians might shine because of their faster ups so are the Byzantines and the Malays so I really like this I for example I don't know how how much better would uh, Huns be in this map or Burmese Burmese would be useless here to be honest that's my opinion so that's a great map Anyway, Dagon here with a big pack of archers is holding his ground. Ryut has also archers here. So Brazil now has twice or three times. Brazil has three times the number of army that the other team has. Almost three times. So that's what I was talking about. This push from Slan is great, but what's the plan afterwards? I don't know. I want to find out. No one going castle yet. It seems that Mentalist is selling, so now Mentalist went up. Uh, one thing that I'm curious is what is uh, Nab's post plan after they gain this map control? Are they go are Island going to sling someone or something? I don't know. I like this map. Okay. So Dogon is just holding ground. Mentalist tried to raid, but Miguel is catching him up and Ryu of course with his archers just do, did a quick wall here so his wood is not raidable so did Miguel and Dogon has a closed up map and of course now the Nabs has put Slan out of the game to this Slan is linking to Mentalist so the plan here is quite simple Spaden will keep make the crossbows and it seems to me that Mentalist will switch into full knights. 
So the plan is full knights, mentalist against and spade and with crossbow against three guys doing army from Brazil team. Miguel is now about to go up. Dogão is already on Castle Age and making crossbow with an Elsom economy and five villager advantage against all other players due his Malay ability. Even make a university here. I really like what Dogão is doing. I'm going to put in his point of view. You can see that Dogão has a lot of farm, so he's going to go up soon if he wants to. Root also has a lot of archers. No one's making more TCs. This is quite something. This is really important because they have no stone. It would be really, really uh, expense to make TCs here. Mentalist coming here. Eight knights plus two. This might be a bad fight for Dogão. He probably didn't realize this yet, but he's losing his high ground. Root is coming, he is coming there. Maybe together they have enough numbers to fight even against this Linked guy. And Miguel is going for the Mangonel with his knights. That's nice. With this amount of archers, Brazilian guys just killed five knights with ease. And the gun is probably going up in the next two or three minutes, judging for his resources unless people just get him messed up all the crossbow guys did ballistics Miguel is doing a <laughs> look at this Miguel just uh, spent a lot of resources in stone because he made a tower and now he's making a TC mentally is trying to raid but in this map raiding is a hard task because all players are so close together that they are able to help each other quick. I believe that even elephants could be a good option here on Castle Age because it's easier for you to go from one sign to another. The speed of the knights here is not important. It's not that important in my opinion. Nebs is trying to advance. A few mangonos here from Mentalist. Spaden also attacking. Spaden as is going Imperial with 1TC using the Byzantine bonus. Let me just check if his land helped him. In the resources we can see that economically Mentalist received resources, 200 resources, maybe his land just did a small push so Spadent could go uh, Imperial. And this is bad for Brazil because even if they are three guys against two in terms of army, they will have to fight. Oh, big shot here, good shot of, from Mentalist. Did a lot of damage on Dogon's uh, crossbows. Miguel coming here to catch up the Mangonel. Brazilian guys trying to take the hill and surround this army from Spaden and Mentalist. But Spaden keeping the hill. More Mangonels coming from Mentalist. A lot of knights. This is going to be really bad for Brazil in my opinion because there is a great spot here for Spaden to camp. I want to know how he's going to react to that. Anyway, Dogão is making the Arbalest as well, Root is going Imperial as well. B uh, all of those three guys are using their Civilization bonus in order to do this. So I really like how uh, mature is the draft from the teams. It seems that after round one, the things that uh, seemed a bit lost on the draft are now making really, really reasonable decisions. And the draft here is really important. Really important. I, I like it. Archery ranges. Don't adding more archery ranges. Ryut's about to make the Arbalest. Mentalist not going up. Neither is Miguel. They're just messing in cavalry. Three runs here from Mentalist coming. It seems to me that Nabs is going to risk. Uh, oh no! I thought that they would uh, go down with all the army, but they didn't. They just sent the runs and a few knights, so this is really bad for Brazil because Dogão is losing his economy, there's nowhere for him to run, only one TC and he's losing this TC. Uh, both Ryut and Dogão are trying to, to go back there, but the knights from Mentalist are more numerous and Spaden has the heal advantage, so the strategy from Nabs here is proving to be slightly better. 
This seems like a game for Nabs, but I wouldn't put Brazil out because they have three guys here on Castle. Oh, two guys on Piro, one on Castle. If Brazil could retake this hill, I don't know what could happen. Slant still on Feudal Age, not adding much to the fight. Brazil is taking back the hill. So I think I can totally see a good chance here for Brazil. Only problem is that after Mentalist goes Imperial, maybe they are in trouble. Miguel trying to get the tower. Other guys helping him with the Arbalest. Mentalist fighting here in order to protect the tower. I don't know if the towers enough are going to withstand. Arbalest here on hill for Spaden, but he's getting bravely outnumbered. This is the problem with this link. You can be outnumbered. Brazilian guys be are under the towers, man. And they keep trying. Dogão is advancing, trying to kill a house. So is real here. Miguel coming with more and more knights. He has three TCs. Uh, villager count is not high from anyone. Slan <laughs> is the one with more villagers. So, But Dogon villager count is really low. He now built two town centers, but... Only 32 villagers, man. After, if he loses his army, he will be a dead beat. Uh, Spare and economy seems okay. He's just spamming arbalests. It seems that nabs are being able to fight under the towers, and this is giving him being some some good good shot at the fightings, because Brazil is not feeling invited to go there. Miguel is still on castaway now. Mentalist has plus four Cavaliers, and this might be a bad fight for Brazil. I believe that they were uh, mispositioned here. Once again, Nebs is fighting with the high ground. That's a bad fight. That's a bad fight. Camels here are a good shot to kill the Cavaliers, but with all those Arbalests here and the team getting split into three different fronts, this is really bad. Dogon is protecting his economy with a few houses and palisade walls. Miguel is going with more camels. Mentalist keeps advancing his economy here on the back. Yeah, economies are not a thing here. Root by by himself more town centers. Miguel by two more. Dogon as well. Brazilian guys are stopping mentalists from raiding. As I said, it's easier to defend from raiding raids on this map. But I don't know. They are going to struggle once again in order to recover this hill. I honestly don't know what they missed here. At some point, it seemed to me that Brazil was able, uh, was about to go to advance here. But I don't know. I don't know what they missed here. It's hard for Miguel because he cannot boom. As he, could, as he would in a regular game. Now some forward sig workshop here from Mentalist. They are taking down Dogon's economy once again. Dogon's economy is really, really hurt. He keeps making Arbalest, so he will still have some army to play, but if the game goes 2 versus 2, Nabs will have the advantage here. Mentalist is even upgrading Paladin, so yeah. Situations get worse and worse for Brazil here. Forward sig workshops, cannons now for Spade, and he is going to push real hard. And Dogon with the almost impossible task of rebooming, he's not gonna reboom. Okay, he's getting together with his teammates here. Oh, the Paladins just spotted him. That's a really bad uh, for Brazilian thing. Spade is uh, mentally sacrificing half of his Paladins in order to kill the. The Arbalest with others. Dogon's economy is dead. They are not fighting on high ground, so it seems to me that Nabs got confident that they can finish the game here. Of and I believe that they really can. With Arbalests. Paladins. Yeah. They are going to finish this game. Let me check the sound, sounds okay. Man. That was a good strategy for Naps. I think that they took some risk of getting outnumbered on Feudal Army, but they countered that by getting a good position. So fighting where they wanted and slinging Mentalist to compensate on a bit on Castaway kind of paid off. 
for the 2 bit versus 3 and they are advancing. Real is trying to make hand cannoneers. No idea why, because they cannot help here in this situation. Miguel Economy is dead. Dogão Economy is dead. Only one here trying to do something still is real, but he's running out of gold. His unit composition is really lame. <laughs> it's a I like the draft from both teams, uh, but it seems to me that Brazil just thought that this would be a regular army against army and Nabs had more of a map control view, a market view of, of, of the Saracens and then compensate and the other two civilizations that were to the, up to the fight had economical bonus that could help them in a one to see warfare so I really like the Nabs strategy really makes sense for me Let's go for second game. On second game, they are playing on the map Arabia. I even checked it because there's so few wood in this map that I thought that they, they were going to play dust. <laughs> so let's first the civilizations. Riot is playing as the Indians. As I said, this was the first pick of Brazil, so they are relying a lot on this civilization and for this map. Dogon has the Malians. Two, this, those two civilizations have great camels, and Malians have great cavalry. So expect great cavalry play. And Miguel has the Huns. So man, Indians with the Huns stable bonus, and Malians with those two bonus and the farms. I think that Brazil might have a really, really strong lineup of civilizations here, and it might be dictating the game. The only thing that I think that Brazil team miss here is a full archer civilization, but it doesn't seem like they want to rely on archers here. And all those civilizations have crossbows, so for Castle Age, no problem. And on Imperial, on Imperial they can sort out who is going to play with each uh, unit. On the other team we have Spaden playing with the Mayans. I like the Mayans on Arabia. I think it was a risk of having a Mayan pocket that is not so great. Brazil just avoided that risk. But they are really, really one of the best civilizations to play on flanks. So, good advantage here for Spaden. On the middle, we have Mentalist with the Spanish. I also like the Spanish. I think they are a great asset here. They are great for Imperial, if game goes longer they are surely going to pay off with the trade bonus. They can. They even have the option of the Conquistador that I wouldn't e really rely in this game, mostly because of the amount of camels and hunts. <laughs> and l for last we have Slan playing with the Berbers, that was one of the first picks here of the Nabs. So Berbers have great cavalry line, they have the OP camo archers. Man, I don't know. I don't know what to think here. Let's see. It seems that Brazil is going for a more offensive approach. Dogon seems to be going scouts as pocket. Root seems to be going archers and Dog Miguel seems to be going archers. So we are going to see double archers for Brazil, double archery range here. And scouts, uh, Dogon with scouts. On the other side, we can see here uh, Slan going scouts. I don't know how much he's going to succeed because Miguel has one of the best maps of the game to, to wall. He's the lucky one here. He can totally complete his walls. And Dogon might be more open, but he can make Malian Spearman, so a problem. Mentalist seems to be going a fast castle. He didn't even pick zebras, he was helping his allies with his scout, he's relying on farms, he's really exposed. I believe this is a risk and his land cannot defend him from archers and gold. I don't know how I feel about this fast castle. And well Spaden, I cannot blame you, but your game is really really given here man. <laughs> As the Mayan. Making a lot of his spearmen. 
Interesting. And now switching into archers. So Miguel is making his first archers and three spearmen. Slan cannot fight this. Slan cannot fight this. He's really in a bad position. He is getting uh, stone. And I also don't like this plan because I can totally see Slan defending himself with towers. But what will happen with mentalist? He's probably going to die. Un unless Spaden is able to help him, but Spaden doesn't seem to be in a comfortable position. And Rilt is not waiting for their movement. Rilt has five archers, and it seems that he's going for mentalist. Mentalist just fucked up his castaway up by making a tower here. He was forced to do this, so he will have faster knights, but not a faster booming. He's trying to complete palisades. Br all Brazilian guys are here, are around. Dogon here on the right. Dog, uh, sorry, Dogon here going for his wood. Miguel on the right side. Ruth coming from the left. He's trying to make a few walls. He's trying to make spearmen. His lens here trying to cover he cover this area for him, but it's not gonna be easy because of those spearmen from Miguel. And why they are bothered he here with those two guys? Ruth is going to attack. The only one that is free from nabs right now is Spaden that tried to go for Root but the Indians have a great of economy and he just has enough army to defend himself. Logan did a half wall here so he was open but Spaden went to Root, maybe he could have raided Logan. Root's coming here, Mentalist has only 3 guys on the gold. Uh, Miguel and Dogon are attacking him. Oh, bad move for Miguel. He's gonna lose two or three archers here. But Ryut is there and he's going to catch a few villagers. Ryut's killing one, two, three villagers. Dogon killed a bit more. Right now, you can totally see why it's a bad idea to go fast castle if you don't have the map for it. Uh, Mentalist is on castle age. He's pop 23. He, ha uh, he has 23 villagers, 22 villagers, sorry, <laughs> two of those are running, he's only being able to get a few uh, gold there, he cannot make another town center, Islan is trying his best to help his ally with his, some scouts that are not enough to kill the spearman. On the other side of the map, he's at only ch the only chance of navs here is Spaden to do damage to the gun. But now that Spaden is going to attack Dogon, Ryut has enough archers to help his ally if he needs, and Dogon is even going to the castaway. Knowing that he's a target, he's even making a tower. Miguel is fine here with massed archers. He'll probably be able to kill Slan, who invested a lot here in scouts and on defenses. So I don't know how this can go good for Nebs. This movement of Brazil in these first minutes totally take Mentalist out of the game. He's now trying to make a few uh, knights, but nothing great. As you can see, Spaden is now trying to do damage to Dogon, but it's too late. Dogon is almost on Castle, and the Malians are great civilization for that. Root knows, and he's after Spaden. Even with the cheaper Mayan archers, the Indians can put some fight because they have a great economy. So Spaden looks like looks slightly better than Rilt on army count, but he just lost a big army, so not anymore. And now Brazil will have a boomed the gown going castle with a lot more villagers than mentalists. I don't know how this is going to happen. Miguel is holding his ground okay, adding more archery range, so he's going to go full crossbows and later cap archers probably so he's the one that's going to counter pikemen if needed Spaden has a really predictable game here he's going to keep making archers Rue to probably just mirror him and abuse of the Indian bonus and eventually I believe that Nabs might have the problems on the late run because of the gun's economy He's going for his third TC, he's making uh, knights with bloodlines and plus one, so Islan is going to be really back. 
And Miguel is here once again on Mentalist. They don't want to let him get back to the game. And this is really bad because even if Islan helps here the mental Mentalist, it will leave Dogão okay to go to Spain and or Brazil can just finish Mentalist and Slam here. Okay, Slam did a good combo here with a few skirmishers, but elite skirmishers are not a great idea when you have the Malian Knights here upgraded. She's doing a good trade. Ryut is holding Spaden on his base, so Spaden is not doing much. Even with cheaper archers, Indian economy is really awesome. Ryut has ballistic and he has three town centers. Spaden is has the same thing, so both are playing really standard. And in the moment that I thought that they would be even, we just got reminded that Brazil has the upper hand and Dogon is here with plus two knights. Letting Spaden with no gold. Where are his other golds? There's one here. Exposed, one on the back. So maybe this was not the best spot for the town center. Maybe he was so confident in his army number that he forgot that two guys could kill them. So that's bad. On the other side, uh, let me see Slan. Okay, Slan maybe did a good call here. The elite skirmishers were able to counter the initial push from Miguel and now he just put up a castle using the stone that he started to collect on Feudal. So maybe now with camel archers he can totally counter the cav archers of Miguel. Only question is who is going to help Spaden if Mentalist is behind? Mentalist right now has 20 villagers less than Dogaon. You see the problem? That's the problem. Dogon is adding more stables. He already has four stable. He's going for his fourth town center. Mentalist now is adding more stables, but he has five military against 14 of the gun. Dogon is inside Spaden's economy, raiding a lot. Spaden not being able to get gold, trying to put up right now the fifty and the fourth and the fifty town center on the gold. So good defense fort here from Spaden. Root totally knew what he had to do. I like this. Miguel now getting uh, some problems here with the elite skirmishers and camel archers. Let's see how he's going to react. Maybe he will need a gun to help him because those two units can totally counter the cav archers. Oh my god. <laughs> Bad spot, eh, Miguel? I don't know. Maybe even a few elite skirmishers could be a good idea here for Miguel. Mentalist is not in position to mess knights, but with a few knights from the gown, he could take down the skirmishers and withstand the camel archer pressure. And now he, can, he will be okay because of the numbers. On the other side, Rilt keeps raiding, Spaden keeps defending, now going for a castle. I'm really liking what Spaden is doing here. He's really did a good, he did, really did a good defense. The only thing that I, in my opinion, was a mistake was taking that fight with Brilt because if he knew that Dogon was coming, he could just retreat his army and fight from safe places. By getting his numbers down, he just made the knights much more effective. And the only problem now for Spaden is that Brilt is going Imperial and he is going to switch into the Imperial Camels. So, bad position for Spaden despite all the effort he did, only one mistake in my opinion on this fight, oh sorry, two mistakes, there were only one on this fight, second was trying to go fast to Root and not to Dogon. If he went to Dogon, maybe things could be more even. Mentalist being dominated here by Dogon. Balian economy puts into the proof here. No one from Nabs close to the 100 villagers, Spaden is the closest one, 10 villagers behind the mark. No one go Imperial, Dogon go Imperial and Root for Brazil. Miguel did a few ratings here, but Island kind of manages the game, but it's GG. By forcing Spaden to put 5 town centers to survive, Brazil just get the game. They had the speed of the Malians here. They had the Imperial Camels, 
they will just choose who to kill first and Root could even use this position here that really well positioned Castle to take down the others with trebuchets so GG great play by, by Brazil in Feudal Age bad uh, decisions for Nabs in my opinion really bad decisions uh, from Slan to Mentalist and Spaden all three players did bad decisions on Feudal Age Slan going scouts against a guy who was practically full wall in my opinion was a bad decision Mentalist going fast castle with a forward gold and no guarantee that he would be safe bad decision Spaden going for going to attack for the first time with like 18 minutes and attack a guy with double, double the archers bad decision as well so after this series of bad decision and a great advantage by build up on the field of age brazil makes one against one that's nice time to go for the third game oh my god What's happening with me, with the game? It seems that the game doesn't want to minimize, man. What the fuck? I'm going to close the game. No idea why this. <sighs> My game just crashed. <laughs> It's uh, th those new games are too too heavy for my computer. Fuck this! I thought my computer was was, were go was going to be real great with this new Windows 98, man. Oh come on! <laughs> Do you like Reside Fortress? Yes, of course I like Reside Fortress. One v one? No. <laughs> the one v one is pretty lame. There is only one strategy possible. The three v three is one of my favorite settings because. I love playing on Imperial, so anyway, let's go for the third game here. It's one for each one of the things, so Brazil just needs to win two more. I really like how Brazilian guys play the Arabia. If they just had the same decisions and insights that they did on Arabia in all other rounds, they could kill anyone. This feudal, this Arabia, Arabia game was great. Now we are going to dust. Dust in the wind, all we are is dust in the wind, scorpions. <laughs> so Miguel starts here, Miguel is go let me change the overlay if I didn't yet. The first one here is M Miguel who's playing with the Magyars. It seems to me that Brazil always uh, is always letting Miguel with the cavalry civilizations. So he is the one that you expect to make paladins for Brazil. And I can see this from the other games as well. He had the only paladin sieves of game 1. Sorry, the best cavalier sieve from game 1. He had the paladin sieve from game 2. Interesting, huh? And, Magyar, and he has now the Magyars, so let's hope for Miguel to make Paladins on this game. Ryut is playing with the Mongols, I like the Mongols, they are really aggressive, and scouts on the hands of Ryut can be really dangerous. I'm just not sure of Ryut with Mongol. I really expect I would like more Doghound with the Mongols instead of him. So it seems to me that he will probably be playing as scouts because with scouts I can see him being more dangerous than Dogown. It makes sense. So I expect this guy here to go for scouts. And Dogown is playing with the Khmer. I'm trying to understand the reasoning on the civilizations here. This map is really scarce on the wood, so if game goes really long Civilizations like the Mongols are not the best because they are really wood dependent. Magyars can be fine, Khmer can be fine, but not the Mongols. Anyway, it doesn't seem to me that like Brazil is going for a really long game. They are seeing the situation here on the open field. They want probably to finish this between Feudal and Castaway. Mentalist on the other team is playing as Vikings. I have no knowledge of why they are picking Vikings. Let me see if I can find out later. 
Ethiopians, Spaden, that's bad. Ethiopians are a mainly archer civilization and he has it as pocket. Not gonna be so useful. And Frank's Slam. Well, thinking here, guys, I think that the perfect position would be uh, for Brazil Miguel as pocket with the Magyars, and for Nebs, Slam as the pocket. So right now I think that both teams are not satisfied with the position of their Frank and Magyar But Brazil still did a better trade because the Mongols would do just fine by going scouts here It's what I'm expecting and see Brooks going up with Pop20 Regular uh, scout build other, build other for the Mongols Using here a few zebras uh, There's one thing that I dislike about this map it's the fact that you have no berries but I don't know players have to adapt it seems to me that Miguel and Root together lame a lot mentalist no yeah they did they lamed mentalist a lot so mentalist is practically out of the game here he had to make farms on Dark Age and not only one but one two three four five six farms man he's going up really late because of this and he's not going to have a good economy so great play for brazil using the scout bonus of the mongols and now it seems that the gown did uh, kind of the same thing against this land we can see Slan here also d doing a lot of farms guys honestly judging by the dark age here i missed the action but I can totally see that Brazil has still food on the town center All the three Brazilian players have food on the town center And are about to... and Dogão is going for archers Rilt is going for scouts Miguel is doing a few uh, militia here Soon to be men at arms And in the other team, Spaden Probably aiming to do archers here It's the best his civilization can do uh, and, but Slan and Mentalist are really really in a bad position Both got lamed so hard on the food They lost food, this is not a good map for walling or for defending The aggressor always will have the advantage in this kind of map And right now Brazil has 3 guys going for aggression Men at arms from Miguel Archers from the gun Scouts for Root Slan here only doing his first stable now having to put a tower here to defend himself really really bad situation the only guy alive here on maps is Spaden it's 14 minutes and this game totally looks like Brazil Mentalist trying to go through scouts as well Miguel pushing him hard with mana arms and ranged units walling is a really uh, big challenge here and it seems that Mentalist was not ready for this challenge he's trying to engage a fight Miguel seems to be winning the fight and Mentalist is GG Game is over for him Let's go for the other side uh, Islam is really in a bad position But he's still alive thanks to Spaden The only one here still alive Man, he's alive but he's having to fight The gun with the Kamir and they call GG so 17 minutes a great example of feudal age play but in my opinion the big difference of this game was the dark age action i'm going to rem go back on this game and show you this guys so okay let's just start making a small analysis let's see miguel for example miguel just started he will have his standard ship four ship here two elephants each one with 400 food he will have three zebras and other ship you can see his other four ships are here so he has the standard resources so does everyone here on the map but now let's advance things a bit it's one mi with one minute and a half i'm gonna pause this game and you, i'm gonna show you guys why brazil won this game one minute and a half Let's pause and put, for example, in Miguel view. Miguel just found his initial ship and he is going to steal ship and boar from Mentalist. One and a half minute. Now, time to see Root. 
Root still is exploring, but he's giving the Mongo bonus for his team. Let's see Dogon. Dogon just found his ship, just found his basic resources. Where is his scout, his scout going? Exactly, going to steal Slan. Now let's go real, real slow and see how those guys are doing. Okay, so let's start with Miguel. Miguel is a, just found Mentalist. Dogon just stole two ship from Slan. So right now Brazil has two ship more than Naps. Mentalist is trying to do the same. He's here searching for Miguel. Miguel just find the elephant and he's going to kill to lure the elephant. One hit, two hits, and now he's going go to go back. Going back, going back, no trouble. Root's going there to help probably after he find his m main resources. And Mentalist is about to lose his elephant. He's going to lose a 400 food source in a map without berries. Now let's go back to Dogon, who is stealing two ships. What else is getting? <gasps> the elephant. So right now, Nabs is losing 400 food here on this left side, 400 food here on the right side, and 200 more ship on the right side as well. So we have Islam with 600 less food, Mentalist with 400 less food. Three minutes and Brazil is claiming to themselves 1,000 food that was originally belonged to Nabs. Mentalist is trying to defend the boar from Miguel, but Rilt is coming here to cover for him, so even if Miguel fails here, Rilt can finish the job. Mentalist, by trying to do this, is not luring, so this is why he will have to make a lot of farms. Slam just gave up on the boar and is trying to lure, as you can see a zebra on his town center. And here the game ends for Brazil. Of course, Dogon will also get his elephant, so Island cannot get, the get it back. And the same for Miguel, but Miguel is in a really lucky day because all his elephants are on the back and Mentalist got his scout hurted on his task to take the boar. So guys, this is how Brazil won. By stealing 1000 food in 3 minutes. Sweet. This totally justify a 15 minute win, right? 2-1 for Brazil, let's go for game 4. Let's hope it's time for a 10 minute game, maybe. <laughs> what game is this? It's first... Uh, well... Uh, I just put the... The game 3. It's 2-1 for Brazil. Game 1 was not Socotra. <laughs> game 2 was Arabia and game 3 was Dust. In Arabia and Dust, Brazil won before 20 minutes and the score is 2-1 for Brazil and this is the map beach fight or beach fight <laughs> great feudal age and dark age play by Brazil in those two games but now we have a really different map and on different maps Nabis, Nabs is having better uh, better decisions strategically. Brazil was not ready for not so quatre. So let's here start with the civilizations. On the left flank. Hello? Hello? Oh my god. My camera that my my camera died. Fuck this. Uh my camera died. I'm going to fix this later. Let me take the camera out. Sorry. So no camera, only voice. Uh, Dogon here is playing with the Celts. I don't know what the Celts can do with this map, but let's find out. Uh, my camera died on a really bad frame, so I took it off. Fuck this shit. Probably a cat. On the pocket, we have a uh, Root here playing with the slabs. These slabs are one of the best picks for this map because they have a bonus. They can farm faster, and for the first two minutes of the game, players will usually only have the farms here to use. You see, Miguel is only now starting with his ship, so is Root, so is Dogon, so is all the others. So right now, Root used it this time to get himself some advantage. When you see the economy, you can see that Nabs, Spaden had more food, you cannot see much of a difference on the beginning, but let's check this statistic again on 10 minutes 10, okay? 
so and Miguel here with the Incas. The Incas are also a good call for this map because they have a free llama. So Miguel can have an edge on the beginning because of the free llama. This was probably a, a great choice. This totally show how more mature the teams are in draft conditions. I expect round three, four, five, and six. Oh, no, six rounds. Sorry, it stops at five. The last three rounds, I mean, to be really competitive in terms of civilization. Let's try the webcam again. Fuck, still on the bad frame. Okay, no good frame. Let's keep doing this. Uh, Brazil seems to be going for a thin wall. I can see Dogão trying to wall here in the middle. The slabs here, Rilt, also going here with a forward villager. And Miguel as well is walling. So those are the civilizations and the plan of the Brazilians for now. Let's check the maps. Islan has the gods, the civilization that no one likes. <laughs> And one thing that I found interesting is that if you pick, for example, Hans in this map or Mongols, you won't be able to use any of their bonus. So gods are not so bad compared to the other civilizations, as the, for the exam example the Celts, because everyone has the economy rhythm uh, a bit slower on this kind of map. Let's see what is his land plan with the gods. And for last, we have now you have in the middle a uh, mentalist with the Aztecs, also a good civilization. And completing the teams, we have Britain's uh, Spaden. It seems to me uh, that Spaden is officially the guy of the archers from maps. On first game, he had Byzantine archers and later Arbalests. On second game, he was the one awarded the Mayans. And on the third game, he was the one that was using Ethiopians. All those three are archer civilizations and now he has the Briton. So Spaden will probably go for archers. Let's see. There's also one thing that I find, find important about this map. There's no stone. No stone at all. So this will force players to go for a maximum of two Triton centers. And it will also force the players not to go trash, not to use tower, not to stonewall, because they need to save the stone for town center. Also, this is why I think this is a bad map for the gods. The best unit that the gods could provide their team is the uh, horse cows, but they need a castle in order to be produced. So this will probably fuck up really, really bad the gods. Without a castle to make the horse cows, what are the chances of Slan here? Is he going to sling? I don't know. Mentalist is on the gold. Both teams ha are finishing their walls. Miguel even did a double palisade layer here. He slants the first on feudal. He has a barracks and a tower. And here goes Slan's economy, guys. He's just risking all of his economy by selling his stone and his hope here is to get some advantage on Dogon. Well, Dogon is also in a bad position, he was forced to make a tower. But he's making a market, he's even spending more stone. Probably his plan is to buy stone once he's in Castle, or maybe his plan is to slink? I really don't know. I can only see one market and no blacksmith. In my opinion, Dogon is going for either a, a late castle or this link. The population can allow him to do the, both of those things. Ryut is going for castle age here with this laughs. And Miguel, I don't know. So, castle age for Ryut. Miguel probably going castle as well. Maybe monks, maybe eagles, no idea. Uh, it seems to me that Islan just changed his mind and is going for stables, so they are probably slinging Islan. That's why he was not bothered in adding more, uh, in adding a tower. Okay, okay, guys, I got the plan. Let me tell you what the plan is. Miguel here will try to open those guys doing uh, siege and monks. The same thing that Mentalist is doing, but he will do it much better because of his civilization. Uh, Ryut is going for knights. 
and he will be slinged by Dogon. And the same will happen on the other side, because Islam will go for knights, slinged by Spadan. So it's a mirror tactics here of a sling to the knight guy and the other guy with Monk and Siege. All the fights will probably happen here, let's check. <laughs> Mentalist even adding more town centers. Here comes Real to his knights. It seems that uh, Mentalist was not expecting, he just got hurt. Slant coming to help, but Root with the Slavic economy? Much better, huh? Let's check the economy. Uh, you see, Spaden have a lot of food, of course he's the Slinger, uh, but if compared compare Slan with Root, the amount of resources that Root took is much greater. He took 200 more food and 500 more wood. So this is really a better economy. Villager count, you can see that Dagan is doing a better job as well, but that's because he's a slinger. And military count, we have Ryut here doing a good job by going straight for a uh, fast castle. This feudal age for Slam was not so good. I believe that uh, Nabs probably improvised this. This was not a strategy. Forgot to make a tower and then go late castle. Doesn't seem like a good strategy to me. Anyway, Mentalist here, trying to do the best he can, but Brazil is taking the lead, they are taking the middle, they are pushing, Miguel bringing monks and brands, real to only knights, Mentalist trying to convert knights, man this is really really a weird game. But I totally see Brazil in a better position here, because they have the heal position. Mentalist and Islam have splitted each other. Miguel is even bringing his monks forward. Real trying to break his stables. Miguel getting a few conversions. Mentalist trying to go here for, for the conversions, but he's exposed. And Brazil keeps attacking. Miguel has a good number of monks, Real a good number of knights. Islam is messing knights here, but he is getting pushed back. The siege is all from the Brazilian guys who are killing the stables. Root now has one, two, going for his third to see, maybe. Oh my god, look at this. Look of what a bad move Root did here. He just bring his villagers to get the gold, but he is going to lose at least two or three villagers for the lions. Bad call, huh? Anyway, he's at least going for the gold. Four stables for Root, four stables for Slam, but under pressure. Mentalist now helping with the Aztec monks. The runs are down, that was a bad move for Brazil. Monks here converting, it seems that Mentalist is recovering the Aztec advantage that was expected you with the monks. Brazil seems to be trying to get, get out of this. And they are getting out in time. Miguel even getting a few conversions. And guys, Root is now clicking up to Imperial Age. He even uh she's even making a few light caps, so he might try to snipe a few of the the monks. Doctor's low, just subscribe it. Welcome back, man. And it seems that the fights here are not going anywhere. Maybe Slan is taking them, but Root can run with his knights. Root now and Miguel are getting the gold from the back. They are the first ones to do. And look how interesting is this. Dogon, who is here just slinging and having a lot of free time, is trying to wall this area to protect the gold of his team. He has a villager here, making a gate and completing a wall. I believe that his plan is to make a full wall around those dunes, those sand here so he can help his team to have a gold free of ratings. Root advanced here with his light calves, put the monks to proof, so this was not good for the slab, the gods Slan and Aztec Mentalist. But Slan has a massive number of knights here. Let's see how they are going to deal with this. Mango knows as well. Oh my god. <laughs> Brazil seems to be having a few problems here, even with Root going Imperial, it's not a big change. 
In my opinion, the big change here is that Riot is doing a much better job on the economy than the other team, and Brazil seems to know what they are doing. It's it's much more. It's like they planned to do this kind of strategy from before. And Dagão is doing a better job than Spaden here regarding use his free time. Spaden is not even trying to go there. Miguel is, is here with his converted knights, not allowing them to get to the gold. And Brazil is getting the gold, two guys fully getting the gold. Dogon walling for it, that's a great job, great teamwork. Nabs is trying to rush, a lot of mangonos from Mentalist. A few monks for Miguel, eh? Mentalist is a bit, a bit more stronger than Miguel, a lot to be honest. It seems that Brazil is relying on the Rusars from Rio here to win the fight. Monks advancing, Mangonos advancing, Miguel trying to make more monasteries. Ryut now has Cavaliers, Ryut now has Rusars. He's engaging with the Rusars, he's getting a few monks, Nabs is trying to go back. Miguel converting the Mangonos, they are getting most of the monks, Ryut is going to advance. It seems that Mentalist traded all his monks for no conversions, now he's trying to get a few, but they are going to lose the middle ground. This land seems to be trying to switch into halberdiers. This can be good. This can be good. Halberdiers are probably the only answer they have, but mentalist is going to is not going to be so helpful here. And even with the halbs, Brazil has the numbers. Brazil has the monks. Miguel is advancing more. Brazil has the gold. <laughs> There's a lot of food here as well, eh? those Alice. Here comes the halves, but Brazil has the numbers and Miguel has monks to help Riot against the halves. There's no gold for Nabs, they have eaten all the gold, they are forced to go there and fight the lions now and fight a few cavaliers from Riot. But the halves are doing a good job. Gods are great on, on messing and they are putting Brazil to run. Oh my god Brazil, come on. Someone please do something. It seems that Ryut will probably change into champions and I love this decision because with the slaps... Oh, I'm not sure if I like this decision. Mm. I would say that the slaps could use the castle upgrade but there's no castle. Okay, now there's a castle. This castle must have been the most expensive of the series. <laughs> Ryut's now making a castle. Defending his ground from the halves and monks with a few long swordsmen and cavalry. But there's no siege from Nabs, so once he puts his castle up, he will have all the time he needs to make the Rosina and have the strongest infantry in hand to hand combat of the matchup. As cavaliers. And now let's see how the, the teams are dealing with the economy. Ryut, 90 villagers, Miguel, 80 villagers, Dogon, almost 80 villagers. Castle up for Slan, who's trying to hurt Dogon's economy, that's a good move. Slan with only halves, Mentalist trying to go for the gold, Slan protecting the area, they had to struggle against lions and cavaliers, and at the same time, Brazil has all three players eating gold here. Protected by the walls of the gown, so that's a much better position. Miguel now adding a lot of barracks to go eagles, it seems, and Ryut going there with the cavaliers. I don't know how I feel about those eagles. I would probably feel more comfortable if Miguel wanted for slingers in this case. In this very specific case, I would rather see slingers than eagles. Dogon is being pushed back, Ryut's coming here to defend here with two-handed swordsmen. Nabs have much less villagers, Islan has only 40 villagers, man. He's totally relying on the economy of Spaden, while Ryut de developed his economy. So Ryut is doing a better job here. The economy of Brazil is much better, but now Nabs is migrating towards the gold. Both slingers are being attacked. Dogon is being attacked by Slan, but is doing a great job here with a few walls and Ryut is here to help him. 
and Spaden is being attacked by the Eagles, Rants and Cavaliers but the help is a bit late so Brazil is winning in the small details here Conscription for Root Trebuchets here, those trebuchets are important because taking down castles will make things a lot difficult for the other team Root will probably make Rosina if he didn't yet Okay, real trading their gold with Cavaliers, something that is not possible for Nebs to do, do this great defense built up by Dogon. I really love those details, man. Castle going down, not possible to take down the traps. Champion being fully upgraded here. Miguel here with a lot of eagles will be able to take down all the monks and the halberdiers. There's no units to counter the eagles, no chance to counter and fight Ryut, and that's the game. In my opinion, Brazil knew from the start what they wanted to do. Nebs had to, to counter it. The civilizations were pretty even. Aztecs were better than Incas, and, but Slavs were better than Goths. But if you see what the difference was, it was do the gun here walling the gold, Brazil going real quick for the gold, putting pressure together, getting the bad, best fights on the beginning, putting pressure into Islam. Islam who couldn't develop his economy and had only 50 villagers against 100, the double from Riot. Slingers were pretty much doing the same, but the gun did some movements with his wallings here on the gold and on his own base that totally changed the course of the game. Root here choosing wisely his uh, unit and Brazil avoiding to fight when not possible. Miguel with the eagles showing where to raid so it was really nice guys. Really enjoyed this game. I will make a small pause here in order to fix the camera because there is this word frame of 